Welcome to the roundup film on my long-term Mercedes E53 AMG Coupe Formatic Plus. Now, some of you asked about long-termers, what does that mean? Well, it just means it's a car that I live with for sort of say six months, it's gonna be nine months actually with this. And in that extended period of time, it gives you a chance to get to know it better. So this roundup film, we've already done one looking at the spec of the car. We did one looking at the drivetrain, which is really key on this car. And this is sort of all the other bits, things that my time with it has, has thrown up as being interesting for better or worse. So, there's about 10 of them, I think. Starting with, well, these screens actually, because they're a massive feature of the interior of this car, both metaphorically and literally, they're enormous, and they've been lovely to live with. The fact that they aren't touch screen, I think is actually a very good thing. Apart from anything else, you don't get fingerprints all over them, so it's certainly lovely and clear. The methods of operating them, well, you've got various buttons down here. You've still got the sort of iDrive type wheel. I know that's a BMW thing, but that's what they first sort of pioneered it, I suppose. We've also got these track pads up here on the wheel, which I wasn't sure about. They're like sort of little, little mouse pads, really. And this one controls the screen here, and this one controls the screen over here. Strangely, for everything up here, I found myself using the pad down here or the wheel. For these ones, obviously, it's quite easy to use in the end. It can be a little bit sensitive at times, but they work quite well. As for the actual operating system in here, I was never a fan of Mercedes uh, systems just to jump into. I always found them quite confusing. Yes, it gets better with time, and this one's better than the, the older version, which I think you can still find in Aston Martins. One particular thing I like about these screens is the fact that you can configure the way this looks in here, which you can either have two big dials, or as I've had it set up, uh, this futuristic screen, as they kind of call it, and or progressive is the, the phrase they use, which just has the central dial there, and then the screen's either side for sat-nav or trip computer or whatever you want, or tire pressures. And to me, that's the one that works best. Next up, something completely different, these windows. Now, when I saw the coupe version of the E-Class, it instantly reminded me of the old CLK, so it's the C209 version, which is the one that spawned the Black Series, which I just thought had a beautiful sort of arching roof line. And the fact you can put these windows all the way down, sort of almost from front to rear, there's a little quarter light left in there, gives the same feeling. I think it's a really elegant look to the car. This obviously has the panoramic sunroof as well, so on a nice summer's day, you can have a practically convertible experience in a coupe, which is rather nice. Moving on, these doors, not so good, to be honest. They are enormous and very heavy. So if you're trying to let somebody into the back, there's enough space in the back for um, adults to sit back there pretty comfortably. But if you park on a hill at all, then either they sort of feel like they're running away from you or they're just almost too heavy to kind of um, push open. I mean, not a problem for somebody like we with you know, big, strong arms. What should we talk about next? Um, speakers as we're on the doors. Burmester system is part of that package which is about two and a half thousand pounds which gives you an awful lot including the panoramic sunroof. It's a good system, uh, the Bluetooth works really well so that's you know, some cars you get in I don't feel like I've had to shout at people they can always hear me I can hear them. Brilliant. It wasn't as good as the Burmester system in the G63 that we had in and that had the speaker in the roof and a couple of extra tweeters up there. That was noticed to be a much richer sound, um, a better quality sound, but this has still been very nice to listen to. Moving on, next piece of tech, cruise control. Now this also has the package which is sort of various safety systems, lane keeping assist, which I don't like at all. The cruise control has been pretty good in terms of the distance thing, but it has something else whereby it recognises the speed limit signs and automatically adjusts the cruise control to that. I don't like that at all because a couple of times on the motorway, which is really where you want to use cruise control, the system has picked up say a sign on a slip road or something like that and that is actually I think fundamentally quite dangerous because suddenly the car well reduces its speed potentially quite dramatically. Not for me that. One piece of tech though that has been very good is the multi-beam LED lighting with this. Now it's 
got a huge number of LEDs in three different rows in those lights and it does the, the matrix thing where it tracks the cars coming towards you, which is very clever. Again, I still think it's a piece of technology that you can't leave entirely to its own devices because there will be situations inevitably where, say you're coming up to a crest and you know that there's a lorry coming towards you, but the system can't pick it up because there are no lights coming towards it so you have to then still dip the lights to make sure you don't blind the person coming towards you. It works well, I like it, it does some very clever things that I haven't seen on these matrix systems before in that it will also dim the lights very slightly so that you don't get glare from traffic signs um, which obviously are very reflective. Equally if it's raining it will dim the lower level lights so that you don't get glare back up from the road. Things like that I think are absolutely brilliant and yeah, very clever. But you still just need to be aware of how you use that technology. A couple of things coming back to the interior. Um, staying on the subject of lighting, you can adjust all the different LEDs in here for the different colours and you can do it so that when you turn the heating up they go red on the vents and turn down and they go blue. It just makes me smile, so I like that. Something else that makes me smile in here, the SOS button. It's just a little bit James Bond, it actually feels a little bit flimsy, but I, Charlie and I were saying, wouldn't it be great if instead of an SOS button, you could actually just reconfigure it to, I don't know, play your particularly favorite tune, Top Gun perhaps. Straight into the danger zone. <laughs> I wanted to mention the ride in this car because I expect the larger wheels on this are the 20 inch wheels as opposed to the 19s which come as standard because they look better and I thought on a big car like this yeah they definitely fill the arches more pleasingly but the ride was something I was then worried about and the very first time I drove it I was actually quite pleased because the air suspension it's not a plush sort of ride perhaps like you might expect for a big E-Class. It's not as wafty as some of them but it gives you a nice sense of connection with the road I feel. Yes it's probably a little bit more choppy and I think some of that is down to the larger wheels but it's certainly not in any way uncomfortable. For me you just get a nicer sense of, of where the car is. It makes it slightly easier to place and if you do drive quickly then yeah you get a, a better sense of of just connection through the steering and through the seat of your pants, which is important, I think, in an AMG or something that's got an AMG badge on it. Finally, on the tech aspect, I've had the Mercedes Me app on my iPhone. And whilst I can't claim it's something that I would have particularly necessarily even signed up to um, had I not been testing it, it's been quite useful at times. It reminds you of the cars unlocked, so if you are in a rush to get into a house or if, for example, I don't know, you park quickly and then go off to do some shopping and halfway round, if you've ever had that thing where, did I leave the kettle on? Or, uh, um, did I shut the front door? It will let you know if you haven't locked the car, which is very nice. You can also, if you park in a big car park, or I use this actually at the Goodwood Festival of Speed, um, big confusing car park, where have you left the car? And it will tell you, <laughs> which is surprisingly, um, just occasionally, quite useful. So what conclusions have I reached after my nine months of this car? Well it's been it's been a wonderful thing to live with as you'd expect and I think that is its greatest strength. It's it's quite an all-rounder this E53. It doesn't have the outright performance of a 63. It doesn't feel like a fully fledged AMG. However the drivetrain as I said this EQ boost system. If I heard that this was coming out in the next, uh, say, C63 or something, then I wouldn't be at all disappointed because I think, in fact, it's the it's probably the chassis that feels um, less playful, doesn't feel like a full 63. I think the powertrain, I can see a place for that in a, in a proper full-blooded performance car. It's, it's that impressive. I just think that the four-wheel drive system in this feels much more tightly controlled so although it's good and I like the way it shuffles talk to the rear very quickly it doesn't feel overall as playful as you would expect of, of you know a full E63 AMG which now will probably put a shot of an estate drifting around you cannot do that in this and it doesn't feel up to that but the drivetrain 
really, really impressive. So, yeah, well done Mercedes. I think the drivetrain is undoubtedly the standout feature of this car and I have loved getting to know it.